Sometimes you'll find that Food for Life is there. We're there, but not everybody knows we're there. But we're there. We're, we're, we're in 50 different countries. Would you like to be known more? Like we would love to be known more. We're trying to raise awareness, yeah. We, we, spend, we don't spend a lot of it. We don't have a big public relations department. Um, again, we're a very grassroots operation. And the way we're operating is that we don't have central... Um, we're not centrally managed. Food for Life Global is the headquarters for Food for Life projects, but all of the programs are financially autonomous. We do support them financially when, when there's a need, particularly when there's an emergency, but they're all independently operated. Um, and so we're trying to raise more awareness. And that's, that's one of the roles that Food for Life Global is playing, to raise awareness, to benefit all those projects. Because they're doing so many wonderful things. Just recently, just recently in South Africa, uh, we served 250,000 meals in one day um, in Durban to a whole bunch of needy people. So it would be fine with you if you got on CNN and all those? Yeah, yeah. of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course we would love it. You deserve to be, my goodness. Oh, yeah. Off the record, how do, you get, how do you get funded? Actually, well, they're all, as I said, they're financially independent, so um, we get government grants, some projects get government grants, corporate sponsorship, individual donors. Food for Life Global gets a lot of individual donors and some corporate uh, sponsorship. Um, but we actually haven't received any government grants at this point. Um, but they're all, you know, independently getting their funding in different ways. Do you oversee all the independent? No. no. I'm not, that's what I'm saying. We, we try to keep it as decentralized. So I don't want to be a micromanager and... Yeah, that, I was going to say, wow. That's too much. Yeah. And so we allow them, you know, to develop the program. We provide guidance to them. Yeah. Um, best practices. We provide training material, promotional material, like the things I gave you. We have the main website, ffl.org. Um, and so in this way, we try to support the programs. So there's a lot of wonderful things going on. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know, I just, that's, that's my thing. Somehow I feel compelled that I've just got to keep pushing this program. And I really feel strongly that this program can really create peace and prosperity in the world. It seems so simple, it seems like really idealistic, and I'm sure, you know, how can a food relief program do that? But this is not an ordinary food relief program, it's not. Beyond words, really, but it's their spirit involved. Yeah, there's more than that. And so we yeah. feel very strongly that this really has deep, a deep impact on people. Mm -hmm. And there's a philosophy behind it. It's not just simply feeding people. We believe strongly that that it's important to to a vegetarian diet. It's important. It's beneficial to the environment. Uh, for example, the meat industry is probably the biggest polluters in the environment with the deforestation and the water pollution and so on and so forth. Um, so the world would be cleaner if more people were vegetarian. Um, so that's another aspect. Uh, aside from that, um, the, the green aspect, that's an important part of Food for Life. The sustainable green living, pure food, pure water, pure land, pure living, that's an important part of the, the whole mission, trying to create this, this uh, pr present this message and create this environment. People need it. There's so much. Yes, I think in the heart of probably every person, everybody wants this. Yeah. You know? I think people are just frustrated like anything. Yes. Right now. The price of gas and the global warming and this and that. They're. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people just feel hopeless, so they don't know, and they don't know what to do. They, they don't know what to do. Paralyzed, kind of. I think so. Yeah. People have become uh, hopeless. Hopefully, I mean, we have met a lot of young people, like in the new generation, there seem to be a lot of... Yeah, there's a lot of hope. Well, that's what I'm finding, that the young people, they're the most, the most informed generation in history. Mm -hmm. They're really in tune, and I think there's great hope for the youth. Mm -hmm. And we want to work with the youth, like anything. We have a big, um, a big initiative to work with the youth. Yeah, they've got lots of energy. Lots of positive energy. Mm -hmm. They're very well informed.
And they, they don't want to see, they want to change things. They do, they want to be active. Yeah. I mean, this is what it looks like to me, the people we know. Yeah. yeah, if you're a volunteer out there, contact us. <laughs> if you're a youth, contact us. Is there anything else we need to cover for the, the, at the tsunami? Tsunami, um, I'm trying to think, about the Gokulam or the tsunami? Yeah. Well, a, lo a lot of, uh, okay, well, this, when Food for Life Global actually went to Sri Lanka with a whole bunch of volunteers, there was about 75 children at the Bhaktivedanta Children's Home. And within one month, that went up to like 40, 50 more children. And most of those children were directly from the tsunami. They were orphaned from the tsunami, either their mother or father or both parents had been killed. So um, that then became a bit of a problem because we had to expand the facility. So that's when we really got involved in helping the orphanage. That's where Food for Life Global got involved in trying to raise funds, raise awareness and support them. We gave a lot of our funding, a lot of the donations that the public gave to Food for Life Global, we gave a lot of that to the children's home. On top of that, we created some interesting programs. One of those programs was a child sponsorship program for $35 a month, approximately a dollar a day, you can sponsor a child. And another really interesting project is called Cottage. And Cottage is an acronym for Children of the Tsunami Arts, Gifts and Education. And it is a gift card business. So we got the children to do artwork and we put them on um, recycled paper gift cards and little beautiful gift cards. And we're looking to sell them now in the West to raise funds, all the 100% of the funds go to the children. So this is micro entrepreneurship, uh, disadvantaged children entrepreneurship, and it's it's very positive for the children, and we feel it's a it's a great way that people can help, and also spread the word. So they're called Cottage Cards, and you can learn about that at cottageyouth.org. Cottageyouth.org. Brilliant. Can you talk any more about? Um Nandarani? Yeah, can you talk about her uh, personally a little bit more? Yeah. Um, when I uh, met Nandarani, she was everything that I thought she would be. Very peaceful, very calming, a very calming presence, and very, very motherly. Um, you just, any time of the day, you see a child hanging from her leg, a couple of children holding her hand looking after her with glazed eyes and just very lovingly, just seeing her as mother. And of course, she's not physically, biologically their mother, but they see her as mother. And that's why they call her Amma, which of course means mother. And I was just so, so happy to meet her. And she treated me like a, a son. She sat me down and she fed me the most delicious lunch that I'd ever had. And she was so, so attentive to make sure that I'd eaten enough and I got this and I got that. And it was just such a nice experience. That was my first impression of Nandarani. And then as I got to know her more, I just saw how determined, how sincere she was in the work she was doing. This, was, this is her life's mission. She has no other motivation except for the happiness of the children. Um, she's as clean and pure and as sincere as a woman you would ever want to meet. We're good? Yeah. Lots of stuff. Thank you so much. Okay.